match between St. Joe's and VCU. I think the key here for v, uh, VCU is to not let Senior Day, where they were expected to beat George Mason, kind of linger with them because this St. Joe's team is coming off a loss of their own and will be looking to steal a victory here in another upset at Sportsbacker Stadium as we are underway. St. Joe's takes away the initial kickoff from VCU and is already pressing, but here you see Sinek move it up to Mon. Mon quickly going up the far side of the pitch and making a nice run, but out of play was Sarver. So we do see Mon kind of playing back up in the midfield with a little bit of a holding roll. Yeah, it's going to be crucial for her to be able to not only advance the ball up the pitch and facilitate as an attacker, which she has done a good job of with three goals and two assists this season. But as you alluded to there, John, she's also going to have to be able to hold her own in the defensive ability, and we'll see that tested tonight as Santangelo has it on the far wing. Was looking for Mon, and it's over the head of Sarver, booted away. Mon got up top in the attack pretty quickly. Mon pushes it back to Santangelo as Santangelo is around defenders and now down the wing. Has Bulatovic in the box if she can find her. Can't get past that last defender, though, and St. Joe stops the attack as the Hawks exercising that back line quite well as that was the new player into the starting lineup, Lauren Hatt on that far side. Back to Santangelo again. Nice little back and forth, Krasula going across the pitch to Matsuhisa. Matsuhisa pass one defender, heavy touches loose in the box. And St. Joe's will corral it and try to see if they can spring a counter, but that one is going to be a little offline. And looked like she was looking for Nicole Angelini. Krasula back to Charon. Sent forward to Matsuhisa off her back heel. Falls perfectly for Bagley, who puts a nice little spin move. Dancing through defenders and cleared away. Still in trouble though, Bagley lays it off for Matsuhisa. Taken away and St. Joe's again. That back line doing just enough to stop the VCU attack, John. Yeah, and it is just enough. Rams doing a great job putting pressure on it, really making St. Joe's work in the uh, defending third. Lays one, but that one is going to be much too close to the keeper, Katie Capaletti. Capaletti comes in a one and a half goal against average, 73% save percentage for her. And VCU's keeper on the other side tonight will be Whitney Horton. That's a 0 0.83 goal against average, despite the three goals allowed against George Mason. And she has saved 81% of the shots on her goal. Now St. Joe's battling as they tried to get it forward they were looking for Daniels, but it's taken away. Daniels, the second leading scorer with four goals and four assists. She has been busy in the St. Joe's attack. Santangelo tried to clear it, deflected, but she will win a throw and working quickly towards Sarver, but it's taken away. Bagley has it now. Bagley turns around. Perfect ball into the path of Aisha Mon. Mon loses it, but it will be a throw in for VCU. And again, Mon kind of hanging back and then when the attack comes, she really springs quickly. Santangelo sends it into the box, out of the reach of Matsuhisa, and will be rolling over the line harmlessly for a St. Joe's goal kick. This was a lot of the tempo of both meetings last year where VCU had a lot of possession, a lot of pressure, but couldn't find final product. And Capaletti has two clean sheets in this stadium in her career. We wait on the goal kick, here it comes. Sent forward and that is, and Daniel's trying to get it there, but Crisula will be the one who corrals it for VCU. 4-2-3-1 for St. Joe's with the Daniels as a central striker. 
out, so Hisa has to back out. Charon finds Crisula on that defensive midfield role for her this season as that one is pushed all the way back to the keeper, Horton. She will usher it along to Sinek. Matsuhisa has to step in the way. Ball into the path of Kendall Sarver. Sarver making a run down the wing now. Looking for a cross. It is deflected, and it will be a VCU corner. Strong defending at the last from Erica Bear, but once again, VCU with all kinds of early pressure. And they had 17 corners in the uh, tournament matchup against uh, St. Joe's last year. Mon will take this first corner. Bulatovic, Matsuhisa, and Sarver likely targets. This one up for Sarver. Just wide of the goal. And it is a goal kick, but I believe that was Sarver who got her face onto it. Maybe a little more face than head, but uh, see here on the replay. Terrific service from Mon. You see Matsuhisa there lurking near post, and she almost got a touch. So St. Joe survives. Maybe a little bit to make note of there if you're a St. Joe's fan on set pieces. The next corner you're going to hope is defended a little bit better as VCU did have a nice opportunity there. Not cleared very well, and Bagley is able to head it to Bulatovic. Handball, and VCU will have another set piece with a free kick in a dangerous area. This is about the distance that Anna Bagley scored an equalizer against George Mason. And she will be the one taking. Rams have been dangerous on set pieces all year. Corners early in the year, especially late in the games. So will Bagley shoot it herself or try to lay it up for a fellow Ram? Comes the shot straight into the arms of Capaletti. So a good idea from a great spot, but winds up a really comfortable save for Capaletti. A lot of the Rams' success in, in playing buildup is, you know, their outside backs, particularly San Angelo, are just really talented with the ball. Speaking of, she lays one perfectly for Sarver, and now Bagley gives one to Charon. Charon sees Matsuhisa, will pass it to Matsuhisa, who has to give it back up. Crisula, the first one to it, but she overruns it a bit. She'll be able to recover and push it over to Santangelo. She has Sarver or Mon. She'll elect for Mon. Mon has Sarver if she wants her. Heavy touch as she tries to win the race down the wing. She will, trying to keep it in play, but it is cleared out of play by St. Joe's, and it'll be a VCU throw in near the corner flag. That's just more excellent pressure. VCU just seems to have a step on every 50-50 ball. Throw in, sent in. It bounces off of Bagley and will be cleared away. Daniels has it now. Laid off as St. Joe's counter comes to a momentary pause. Matsuhisa getting in the way. We'll see Flanders push it up. She moves it up to Angelini. And you can see the ramp pressure really putting St. Joe's off balance, even with possession, they had time to make better passes right there. Cleared up, but not out of harm's way. Matsuhisa trying to box out, but St. Joe's will win, and Angelini has it taken off of her foot by Charon. Bagley lays it back to her, sends a cross in that is deflected, and now the Hawks can try a counter, but Krizula stepping in the way to win possession back for VCU. Her play in the midfield is really the linchpin to all of this pressure. Bagley goes down. The official will say play on. Sinek 
sees Matsuhisa now, who has moved to that central role, and now Krizula lays it off for Santangelo. Santangelo looking, puts a long shot that will sail wide of the goal. A goal kick, but Santangelo has scored this season. That's a good looking strike right there, and, and I like the concept. There's been a lot of dribbling, a lot of one-on-one -on -one play. Maybe let a couple fly from outside the box. That might open some things up. If nothing else, it'll make St. Joe's think about having to close out, and maybe that opens up another forward to lay the ball off to later in the match. But Capaletti, with another goal kick, sends this one long as well. Bagley drops it off to Aisha Mon. Mon. Starts a long run and finds Sarver. Sarver will slam on the brakes near the line and win her team a throw. Well, the Rams really have St. Joe's on the back heel. Of course, they, this is really how the two games played out last year. Not necessarily a good sign. Krasula. Back to Sinek. Sinek. Forward toward Matsuhisa. Finds Bagley now. Bagley wants to move it back to Santangelo, electing for space. That frees up Mon. Mon. Low cross is stopped and cleared away up toward Daniels. And Daniels with the long run loses it. See Santangelo with it now as they keep moving it back. Forward to Mon. Mon. Nice little move to get around the defender. Was looking for Bulatovic. And that was a great stop for St. Joe's because if they didn't get that kind of defending, Bulatovic has a point blank shot at Capaletti. Erica Bear with that clearance. So the Rams are really making some creative runs. Their off ball play right now is excellent. Throw in for Santangelo. Looking. Cleared away at the moment. Under pressure and will drop it to Grizzula. Bagley. Long one, and it will be another goal kick for St. Joe's. It's a very rare speculative ball. Most everything VCU's done, although there hasn't been a ton of final product, there's been a lot of purpose behind almost everything. And that was kind of a, a hope for ball right there. See the goal kick taken in by St. Joe's, but a lazy pass is taken away by Mon. Mon will lose possession as St. Joe's recovers, but that's the kind of passing that you can't have if you're St. Joe's because if you give them opportunities, it will present problems. And now a free kick is going to be given on a foul that will give St. Joe's the ability to at least momentarily not have to worry about that high press from VCU. Now they can catch their breath. Mentally regroup a bit anyway. I don't think they've been able to put three passes together yet. They just haven't had possession. Rams have dominated the middle of the park. Sent forward, but VCU again gets in the way quickly. Daniels looking for a pass. It's taken away. Charon pushing it up. Opportunity is going to end there as that's Bear again getting in the way. Charon stops it again, but that was Bulatovic trying to make a long run. But once again, Erica Bear stepping in to stop the VCU attack. She has been busy tonight. It will be a St. Joe's throw here on the near sideline as we see Kayla Flanders taken. Flanders moving it up to Angelini. She'll lose possession and there is Bear stepping in one more time. I think we're just getting to the point where everybody at St. Joe's has touched the ball tonight. That might have been uh, Randak's first touch. Yeah. yeah, She has yeah, been held quiet before that, but St. Joe's finally getting 
players involved. Haven't had a sustained attack yet, but as you said, John, this is a similar looking match to the last year's meetings between these two sides, and St. Joe's would win both of those. Bagley now with it. Bagley can't get that pass all the way to Mon at the top, and the attack will stop, and St. Joe's trying to launch a counter, but that one, a pass that will be too strong, and VCU will have a throw in on the far side. It almost looks like St. Joe's has been speeded up. Like they're, you know, again, they had an open pass right there and couldn't connect. Looking for Sarver. Sarver's going to be in a foot race, but she will lose that foot race to the line, and it will go out for a goal kick. You could see Khalil there was making sure that Sarver didn't have an opportunity on that attack, but still scoreless here as we have played 15 minutes in this match. Well, St. Joe's back line has played well. They've answered every challenge thus far, and Capoletti hasn't really seriously been challenged yet for all of VCU's possessional dominance. Bulatovic stepping in the way again. Sarver won't be the first one there, though, and it's sent back to Capoletti. She can have another try. She'll send this one long again. That is Santangelo and Dumont battling. Dumont has it. Dumont lays it off for Daniels, but cleared away by Sinek. And now we have a VCU player down on that far sideline. That is not good news. That's San Angelo. Slow to get up, and as we have alluded to, those wings are so critical for VCU. They know the right moment when to be aggressive, step in the way of passes, and when to let the forwards come to them. Yeah, the outside backs really trigger the whole thing. They really create pressure that, and thus far, VCU's dominance in possession in the midfield, particularly through Krizula. St. Joe's will have that throw in on the far side, and we'll see what the Hawks have in terms of the attack. Headed away by Krizula. That one went back to Dumont and now sent forward by Hat. Charon will clear it away. She'll find Bulatovic. Bulatovic lays it off for Matsuhisa. And the VCU counter can start. Matsuhisa looking for options, finds Bulatovic. First touch is not good enough as St. Joe's has the space to step in and take it away. Laid off for Daniels. It's going to be cleared away. Nice job that time by Diorio back in the lineup tonight. And pressured for the first time tonight, so that's a good sign. Really outstanding physical defending by Maddie Anderson. Turned the field. Way too heavy of a touch that time from Bear, and it will be a throw-in for VCU. That's going to be crucial for St. Joe's, though, when they have those counters to keep that kind of attack and put that kind of pressure on the VCU back line. We can see when they're on the attack, they are kind of just leaving those two center backs by themselves. This one moving up and see Orindak looking for options as she will lay it off and it's sent ahead to Daniels. Daniels won't be the first one there. She had to hold up Diorio. That allowed Senek to get in there and clear it away, but that was a nice pass that time by Dumont to kind of spring the attack into the box. Best St. Joe's pressure of the night. Maybe they start to kind of grow into the game a little bit here. Throw in coming on that far side. VCU's going to have to see if they can stop this one. First wave misses, but Sarver will clear it away. Now Mon has it. Sent back in. Scooped up by Horton. And that will put an end to St. Joe's attack. Well anticipated by Horton, and you could forgive her if maybe she'd been wool gathering a little bit back there. Clock is running down. Played almost 19 minutes here. Horton boots it away. First time she's had to kick it, and it will bounce just in front of that center line and roll all the way back. St. Joe's will push it back to Capaletti, and 
We see that one hops over the head of the St. Joe's midfielder, number seven, Nicole Angelini. That allowed VCU to send another long ball back into the St. Joe's defending third. First time we have said this name all night, Natalie Nevins with a nice little move to keep the attack alive. Daniels has it at her feet. We'll give it back to Nevins. Nevins, the leading goal scorer on this St. Joe's team, has been under pressure the entire night. That one flipped up toward Daniels. Daniels looking. Loses it to Grizzula. Bagley now has to look for options. She will move backwards towards Sinek. Now Diorio. Offside on Bulatovic there as she was still in the process of getting back onside when that one was sent long. Yeah, VCU's play in the middle of the park defensively has really removed Nevins from the equation thus far. And she's a player that the off, she's really the fulcrum of their attack. Bagley flips it on, and that was close. It will be a throw in for St. Joe's, but I don't know if Flanders knew that she had Bulatovich looming. Boy, Bulatovich really closed in a hurry right there. She was worried about Bagley, but now St. Joe's has an attack building as. Orindak will lose possession. It's sent forward by Charon, but it is another Hawks throw in here on the near sideline as they move steadily up the pitch. Well, they're finally giving the grass a rest to our right. Sent down the line. It's another throw in this time for VCU. But you're right, ever since about the 15 minute mark, St. Joe's has looked better in possession. Been able to sustain a little more. Put forward toward Nevins. Nevins puts that one to the feet of Had, and now Angelini has the ball bounce off her while she's on the ground as Nevins was trying to get it back to her quickly. I think Rizzula wins another duel in the midfield. Sent forward. Had lots of shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder contact there, all clean, and now Diorio under pressure from Daniels. Daniels will win possession on that wing. Nifty move there, but it is Santangelo assisting and winning possession. Santangelo will watch that one roll over for a goal kick. Anderson on St. Joe's right, the right outside back. It's really doing a nice job of physically defending that wing, and that's where VCU has been trying to put a lot of pressure. Now we will see VCU move forward. Long ball from Sinek. Headed away and Charon won't win the battle there. It'll be a throw in for VCU as looked like Angelini was maybe thinking about running with that one. Krizula with a nice move in the midfield. Lays it perfectly for Bagley. Well, maybe not so perfectly. Maybe just a touch too strong, which allowed Khalil to come in and clear it away. A really well-timed step by Khalil. That's going to be a foul on Khalil as she takes out Sarver, looking for Mon quickly on the free kick, and it's kicked away. St. Joe's with possession. They won't be able to maintain it. Bagley near the center line. That's where she'll start with her possession. Slams on the brakes and creates a little more space for herself to look for options. She'll go to Krizula. VCU building from the back line now. Down to Charon. Charon. Forward, Bulatovic. Light touch. Looking for Matsuhisa, but it's taken away as St. Joe's defense comes up again. Krizula trying to Win possession back, but won't be able to do so. Orindak finds an option here for St. Joe's as they're building down the wing with Flanders. Flanders moves it up to Nevins, but Nevins couldn't quite keep the ball on her feet, and that one will get away. Bulatovic trying to pressure Bear as well as Sarver, and Sarver now will watch Capaletti kick it high. Nice job by Matsuhisa to get deep defensively. 
Sharon steps in. Has Bagley to her right. She'll move to the left. It's a really well-timed challenge. We'll push Santangelo out and now Mon. Mon fouled and it will be another free kick for VCU. This one a little further away and probably see a cross into the box here. Take another look at it here, John. Yeah, Anderson got his money's worth on that one. Didn't even look back at the referee. Just time to go <laughs> get in the wall. Yeah, if you look back, you might see something you don't want to see. So. Yep. <laughs> Ella Higgins getting set to come on for VCU. We're going to see uh, Marin Boyle for St. Joe's. Looks like Bulatovich will take the free kick. That one bounces off the post. And it will be Daniel sending it away off of Bagley. Santangelo will step in and put it back to Bagley. Bagley trying to find options. Here is the VCU attack down the wing. That's Sarver. Sarver gets it away from one defender but can't find a teammate before it is cleared away. And the pressure can be relieved a little bit as we see subs on both sides coming in. So Ella Higgins in for VCU. Marin Boyle is uh, one of the St. Joe's subs. And there you could see the free kick from Bulatovic. Went over everyone's head, got to the post. It's a dangerous attack there from VCU, maybe the closest of the night so far. Sarver battling. will lose that battle, and St. Joe's will be able to move possession the other way. Daniels back to Nevins. A play and a throw in. Is he green, the other sub for St. Joe's? Chested down there by the Hawks. And a lot of back and forth here in the midfield now as VCU will try to hold on to possession as they go out wide to Ella Higgins. looming here nice move as that frees up a possibility to go to Daniels Daniels trying to get around the last defender but that's Sinek and Sinek clears it off of a hawk Crisula will be able to pick it up and the counter is still building Crisula will slam on the brakes and move it back to Charon Matsuhisa couldn't get on the other end of that heavy pass Rachel Brown was the third St. Joe's sub at that stoppage. Green replaced Angelini. Boyle uh, came on in for Dumont. Throw in is out of play, but will stay with the Hawks. Continuing to move up the pitch. Thrown forward and cleared away. Bagley steps in. That will be a handball and a free kick for VCU. Bulatovich came out uh, for Higgins. Brown replaced Randek. Twenty-eighth minute in St. Joe's, still looking for a shot. Sent long, but the flag is up. That will be offsides on VCU. So St. Joe's will get a free kick there with about 17 minutes to go in this first half. St. Joe's, by the way, not a stranger to absorbing pressure and not taking a ton of shots. They were 14th out of 15 in the A-10 of the regular season in shots taken. Sent forward. Nifty little move this time for Green. Green being hassled by Charon, and Charon will win a throw-in for VCU. Mon will concede a free kick as she pulls down Flanders. 
Looks and like uh, Flanders kind of started the holding there and right in front of the Ram bench, which you can imagine doesn't go over particularly well with the home team. See what happens here on this free kick that will be sent in by Natalie Nevins. Punched away by Horton. We have a whistle and will be a VCU free kick almost immediately after the ball is sent in by Nevins. Yeah, some shenanigans in, in the 18 there, which probably was fortunate for the Rams. That was a very nicely struck ball by Natalie Nevins. In addition to having five goals, she has assisted on two goals for St. Joe's this season. Very, very good Hawks attacker and kind of playing that central attacking midfield role for St. Joe's tonight. Mon trying to get around Bear, and she will win a throw in. So we've seen Mon kind of move up in the attack. Matsuhisa has dropped back when headed. Charon will be the first to it here. She'll move it back to Crisula. Crisula under pressure has to quickly pass it back to Diorio. Diorio has it taken away by Daniels. Daniels has to wait for help. Looking down the far side, crosses up Santangelo. The Hawks have a chance. It's wide open for Nevins, who taps it in for the goal. Deja vu all over again. Rams dominated the first half an hour. Didn't create final product. Two outstanding touches after Daniels comes up with the win of that possession. And all of a sudden, the Rams are chasing the game. Take another look at it here. Just a absolutely beautiful pass to Nevins. As calm as you like past Horton. There was nothing Horton could have done at that point. And it is a goal in the 31st minute for Natalie Nevins. It is her sixth of the campaign. And it puts the Hawks up 1-0 here in the A-10 women's quarterfinal. The Rams really got kind of caught up with that back four. And Nevins all by herself. Here comes another Hawks counter. Headed away. Not wasting a lot of time, though, is. Throw in for St. Joe's. Rachel Brown awarded the assist. That's her first of the season on Nevin's sixth goal of the campaign. Mon pushing it toward Matsuhisa. Now back to Charon. Bear moving it back, and they will move it all the way back to the keeper, Capaletti. Although that clearance leaves a little bit to be desired, as means the back line's going to have to work a little harder. Diorio now trying to challenge Daniels. She'll move it to Santangelo. Higgins back to Santangelo, heavy touch. And the VCU attack finds Bagley now in the middle. Bagley will move it back to Crisula. Forward to Higgins. Higgins looking for options. Will be a corner for VCU as she was trying to connect with either Sarver or Mon. She had both of them as options in the box. But again, the Hawks step in the way and we'll see this corner Higgins well closed down there. Winning that corner was probably her best option. Matsuhisa on the corner. Sent in over the head of everyone. And St. Joe's will watch that one roll out for a Hawks throw in near the corner flag. We'll see how much pressure VCU elects to apply here. Well, St. Joe's won their last two visits here, 1-0. And in the seven all-time meetings between these teams, the losing team has been blanked six times. So that first goal is huge. That one is sent towards Sarver, but Sarver is offside. So St. Joe's, again, will have a free kick and be able to survive another potential VCU attack. 
It's the third time that the Rams have been called offside here in the first half. Back line for St. Joe's doing a good job with the offside trap tonight, John. Yeah, they've, they've positioned really well, especially with Sarver, still a freshman, really getting aggressive up on that right. Bagley was looking for help, but this one is going to be put toward the path of Natalie Nevins, again battling for possession. Charon goes down, and now it'll be a free kick for VCU. Nevins a little too aggressive in that attack. Headed on Bagley. Hits Charon's shoulder, and that will roll, in, roll out for a throw in. Looking for Daniels. Thrown is a little too strong. Diorio slams on the brakes, allows Sinek to clear it out of play. Hawks again, steadily, but surely moving forward. This is Flanders on the throw. Too long, and that one will be cleared away out of play again, this time by Diorio. About ten and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Matsuhisa stepped in the way of Nevins, but... Nevins and Matsuhisa still not done battling, and finally VCU will get a throw in as that one goes off of Bear. VCU now winning a couple throw ins along the sideline. Ten minutes to go. Nice move for the Hawks. That pass, though, leaves a little bit to be desired. It looked like she was looking for Boyle, but got crossed up. However, the Hawks do have it again. Daniels just has Sinek put a foot in at the right time to get it off of her, and that allows VCU to put an end to that counter. However, they're going to have to recover quickly as the Hawks did have a throw in. Nevins trying to spin around and find Daniels. It will be cleared away by Diorio. Right now, VCU on the back foot a little bit to close this half. That one headed in a direction probably was not intended. Charon will eventually clear it away. As the Hawks hoping to build something here again. Looking for a second, perhaps. Matsuhisa towards Sarver. It will bounce. Decision is given towards St. Joe's for the throw. Matsuhisa again steps in the way, and it'll be another throw in. This one given to Green. Green. Throws in toward Nevins. It's deflected and the ball ping-ponging around right now in a dangerous area if you're a VCU fan. Another throw in for the Hawks slightly further away from the box. Mon lays it off for Sarver but that time we got to see St. Joe's again get another nice clearance and we will see Gadebronski come in for Krasula. Gadebronski was involved in the collision there, but it's St. Joe's that comes away with it. Long ball, and Santangelo knows she's under pressure. We'll just send it back to Horton. So it looked like Brown that was starting to apply the pressure again from the outside. She already has one assist. Sends it back to Daniels. Daniels can't get past that last defender, but here is Nevins. Nevins shot, deflected, and will be scooped up there by Whitney Horton who has maybe seen enough of that. Well, St. Joe's really has grown into this match, and then there's no question that goal has given them belief, and you know, the territorial battle really has kind of flipped. Diorio moving forward towards Santangelo now. Santangelo to Higgins. Higgins off of a St. Joe defender, has to move it back to Santangelo now. Higgins does have some space. 
goes all the way up, but a heavy touch that time from the freshman Sarver. And again, the Hawks trying to start a attack, but that one too far for Flanders. Well, one ball by Green in the midfield, just a little too heavy on the pass. Green has been another player that has looked good on launching some counterattacks off the bench here tonight, John. Only two starts this year. She was actually a starter last season in the A-10 meeting between these two teams, the tournament game. Bagley, nice touch. Trying to find a second touch that would be a beauty to Mon, but it will be deflected. Now she'll lay one off for Matsuhisa. Matsuhisa slams on the brakes and is looking for options. She'll elect to go toward the line down the wing. Sends a cross in that sails over everyone's head and will be headed away from goal. Santangelo now with it, loses possession, and it's sent up toward Daniels. Daniels looking for teammates, but that one is going to be too long, and it will be a St. Joe's throw as VCU got in the way of that attempted counter. DiOrio will find Higgins, but Higgins, a little bit of miscommunication there with DiOrio maybe. We see another St. Joe's attack building. This is Green. Green has an opportunity. Let's lose a shot. Horton tips it up in the air and then brings it in. But that may have been Matsuhisa with the slide tackle getting just enough of the ball, according to the official, to not allow Green to have a cleaner opportunity and a cleaner attack, John. That was Matsuhisa desperately defending, and it still wound up great chance for Green. Rams fortunate it was struck pretty much right at Horton. Bagley has tried a couple of those balls over the head of the defender. That one unsuccessful, and now VCU just maybe, they're definitely looking for this equalizer in the final five minutes of the half, but they got to be careful not to leave themselves too susceptible to the counter. Bagley, this time a beauty of a touch to get around the midfielder and keep the attack going. She has Maughan, she has Higgins. She'll go to Higgins on the far side. Higgins, much too strong, sails over the goal, and that's a goal kick. Ram's going to bring uh, Ava Pustover on here. And uh, Lindsay Munyak is, yeah, that's, Horton really had to hold her ground. Green had a lot of space to shoot right there, but almost still overpowered Horton. As you said, Munyak and Pustover will check in for VCU. Lindsey Martin looking for answers right now. The uh, glow of the opening uh, quarter of an hour or so is uh, long since faded from the Ram perspective. And here comes another attack for St. Joe's. Looking for green, but VCU will get in the way, and that's a dangerous decision there. Horton had already started off her line when Munyak started to peel away there. But Munyak will concede a throw and at least end the St. Joe's attack momentarily. And it gives her teammates a chance to reshape. It's going to be a corner for St. Joe's, and the Hawks getting their first corner of the night with three, just over three minutes to go here in this first half. They lead 1 0. Will be Nevins with the corner. Sent up, still at the on the floor now, and finally, Sarver will be the one that clears it out. Sent back in, but well wide of the target. It will be a goal kick, but that is what you don't want to see if you're defending is the corner seeing the ball on the turf near the goal. Yeah, that's a heart and throat moment for the VCU bench. They will keep moving it up. Munyak looking, finds Mon, Mon. Sees pussed over, trying to overlap, but St. Joe's able to clear it away, at least momentarily. Goes as far as Munyak, who now tries to put on the brakes. Trying to get it around Green, will do so. Mon to Bagley, Bagley. Where is she going to go? Lays it off again. 
This time it will be a VCU corner, and we see the Rams starting to put pressure back on here. Pustover doing a good job in that midfield role. And that Mon pass, that quick one touch, really is the move that set up the corner. And it will be Mon with the corner. Sarver has it at her feet, trying to move back. Bagley has to move quickly. Munyak under pressure, keeps moving back. Sent forward toward Higgins. Bagley has it at her feet. Where will Bagley go? Bagley maybe takes it herself. Shot deflected by Capaletti, cleared away by St. Joe. Still in trouble with a minute and a half left. Higgins puts a shot on. Hawks clear it again. Got a Bransky, drops it off to Santangelo. Higgins, one less than a minute to go here in the half. Cleared away, it's a VCU throw. VCU has to work quickly if they want to find the equalizer before the halftime talk. Well, that was an outstanding save by Capaletti. This one being pushed further away from goal. Got a Bransky, a little heavy of a touch, but Mon, or excuse me, Munyak stepping in there, loses possession, sent forward toward Daniels. Not out of the woods yet if you're VCU with 23 seconds to go. Horton comes off her line and will put an end to that. But as you were saying, John, Capaletti with a fantastic save on the shot from Bagley to keep this 1-0 St. Joe's. Yeah, Bagley hit a really tough knuckler. And as the clock winds down, that will be the score at halftime here at Sportsbacker Stadium in Richmond, Virginia. St. Joe's the sixth seed ahead of VCU, the three seed in the women's 8-10 quarterfinal, 1-0 at the half. We'll step aside and be back with more women's college soccer on in the pink shoes. She'll yep. be back out. Higgins did stay on. Krizula has come back. Bustover and Munyak have gone back to the bench. Hawks do get that first kickoff. They will waste no time sending it toward that VCU back line. Charon forward, looking for Matsuhisa, who's under pressure, and her pass to Krizula is a little wayward, and it goes to Daniels. Daniels' shot will sail wide, and it's a goal kick, and that is maybe not what you want to see if your VCU is a wayward pass to start the half. And now the Hawks starting to have a little success with high pressure, and Daniels is dangerous. Charon finds Higgins, who has a nice light touch to Bagley. She'll go across, was looking for Sarver, but it will be taken away, and Capaletti sends it long. Crisula toward Bagley, but Matsuhisa has it. Bagley and Crisula a little back and forth, and now she will drop it to Santangelo as they want to try the other side of the... St. Joe's defense. Mon does have an option. She will find an attacker that looked like Sarver. Higgins had it for a moment, but again, that St. Joe's back line stepping in at the right time. Here's Santangelo in the middle of the park. Don't usually see her there. Mon running down the wing. Will lose possession as that was Rachel Brown crashing in there to put a foot to it and VCU has a throw. Sarver over to Bagley. Bagley heavy touch will lose possession as that one is escorted back to the keeper by Marin Boyle. So Brown and Green stayed on and Arandek and uh, Angelini who started the game are on the bench right now. Santangelo forward. Sarver couldn't quite get around the defender as once again for St. Joe's, Maddie Anderson doing her job on that wing. She will concede the corner, but didn't want to allow Kendall Sarver the opportunity, the freshman, to run in at her keeper, Katie Capaletti. Anderson's consistently been able to make that last desperate defending play. Matsuhisa. Who will she find on the end of this corner? Oh, 
Sent in, Crizula went up. It's sent away, and St. Joe's will come away with it. And here come the Hawks. Flying on the counter. It's Daniels. Daniels ahead. Will be cleared away there as Charon steps in the way as Again, the Hawks were flying on that counter. Looked like Nevins was looming to try to see if she could get another shot on goal. They're really starting to get bodies forward. Definitely not parking the bus. I was going to say that VCU looked like they were going to take the throw, but there was no way that that was going to be a VCU throw. <laughs> if nothing else, maybe Santangelo hurried St. Joe's into getting to the ball. That cross... Hangs up, but goes over the goal harmlessly, and it will be a VCU goal kick. St. Joe's does have the wind at their back this half. And the wind is not insubstantial. It's starting to really blow. Horton keeps it on the ground, and we'll move it over to Sinek. Sinek. Since a long ball, Higgins will flick it on towards Sarver. Now Sarver, shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder contact. She will go down. It will be a VCU throw as that time for the Hawks. It was Khalil getting involved in the challenge. Another St. Joe's throw in. With Higgins staying on, Bulatovich is the Ram starter who's not back to begin the second half. Crisula, Charon, Charon deflected by Nevins, and it will be sent out of play. And it's another Hawks throw in as St. Joe's just wants to kind of keep the ball at their feet. Best way to make sure VCU doesn't find that equalizer is to keep the ball away from your end. Well, you can chop the game into a thousand pieces and you're still playing next week. Charon sends it in the middle. Sarver. Looking for options, she will send it over to Matsuhisa now. Matsuhisa has Sarver back in the middle. She'll go to Bagley up top. Bagley will move it toward the middle, looking for help. And again, St. Joe's right where they need to be as Crisula now applying the pressure. Higgins almost had an opportunity, maybe still does. Higgins goes down in the box. We'll bring a cry from the VCU crowd, but St. Joe's would have been, probably felt hard done by if that had been a penalty. Yeah, you're probably not going to get that one. She didn't have possession of the ball. It was... You know, several yards away. Bagley. Can't get it past the midfield, and Crisula will try Matsuhisa this time, who tries to flick one into the path of Aisha Mon. Mon sees Higgins. Mon puts the shot. It's a caller, and it will go off the back post, holding the net up, but it had to be deflected by Capaletti up there. Mon almost finding the perfect curler as we take another look here. Well, I didn't think she'd be able to get the necessary pivot to get that shot off like that, but she did. That's a great shot. So Aisha Mon with another shot on goal for VCU. It's another save for Capaletti. And now Mon will take the corner. Sends one in and Capaletti the first one to it as she gets in the way of Matsuhisa. And now she'll roll one on and here comes another St. Joe's counter. Off of that corner, looking for Daniels. Daniels will have it at her feet. Has Boyle as an option if she wants it. Crosses over the defender, and it is deflected. Santangelo clears it away, and VCU can breathe a sigh of relief this time. Well, Senek with a big block and a great job by the Hawks to get runners forward there. Daniels not done yet. Sends a cross in. Horton will come off her line to snag that one. The Hawks still playing really aggressive soccer with that one goal lead. Mon has it now, and we're looking a little more end-to-end -end than we did in that first half. Ella Higgins with a long run, but won't be able to get there before it is pushed back by Khalil. Bagley has it. Higgins needs to get back on side. Matsuhisa has it on the far wing, but can she get past her defender? It will be another VCU corner. Shimon will go out to take it on that far side. Well, they're piling up the corners. Did the same thing in the opening round of the tournament here against St. Joe's last year. Sixth corner of the match so far. 
equals their first half total, and we're still with 37 and a half minutes to go here in the match. That one is sent in. Capaletti punches it away. Bagley took a little bit off, but it will find Mullen. And the official had the flag raised. It will be offsides. Yeah, Mullen was offside <laughs> by a couple of yards. <laughs> Wouldn't need VAR to get, like, the ruler out on that one. <laughs> yeah, no controversy with that call, but Capaletti... Maybe happy to see Bagley check up a little bit on that ball that was coming in. Sends one long toward the center line and it is headed up in the air. Both teams pinballing the ball back and forth. Charon needs to make a decision. She will just put it out of play. Will be a throw in as that took a deflection on its way to the sideline. Well, that was headed by a St. Joe Hawk, but only to Kendall Sarver. Sarver wants to try the wing this time. Will do so unsuccessfully, but she will win a corner. Another VCU corner. Can this one have more success? St. Joe's has done a pretty good job. Other than that first, the first couple set pieces, they have done much better at defending these set pieces, John. Yeah, Rams haven't been able to really get on the end of them and cause trouble. Mon preparing to see if she can get this one in to the back of the net. It's headed away, and it will be another VCU corner. Try again. Tried the near post. Sarver goes in, but can't win the 50-50 ball. Cleared away. Will be a VCU throw in, but again, yeah. oh, Hawks doing their job defensively there. Hawks center backs just play with a, a real physicality. Erica Baird you know, got up there and cleanly won that header. Here's an attack building. Mon has it. Mon sends something across. Capaletti comes off and dives to get it. Was it near a VCU attack? Would have been a long run for Santangelo. Would have had to roll past everybody for Santangelo to get on the end of that. But here is another look at that cross from Mon. And Again, you can see there Capaletti snagging it. Higgins may be the closest one to it, but didn't really have an opportunity to get on the end of that. Just under 35 minutes left in the match. VCU still trailing 1-0. Higgins plays it to Sarver. Sarver back to Higgins, but Higgins can't get the right touch, which allows it to be cleared away by Khalil. Santangelo, long throw along the line to Bagley, and it will be another VCU throw. Sent to Higgins. Higgins elects to go toward the middle, will lose possession, as that is going to be Boyle stepping in the way. Boyle sends it up to Daniels. Daniels. No, Bagley will put pressure. Loose ball will be... Sent further along by Boyle, and it will be a throw in for VCU. We're starting so. to look like the opening 15 minutes of the game again, where St. Joe's is just trying to hang on. Throw was a little too strong. Santangelo now heads this one perfectly to Mon. Mon wins another throw in for VCU. It'll be interesting to see here as. That throw in will go over everyone's head and does allow Sarver to make a run down the wing. Sarver's pass is low to Higgins. She can't get on the end of it. It's cleared away. Don't know if that was miscommunication or just Higgins just had the wrong foot there. Let's take another look at it. Ah, just couldn't quite get there. Another opportunity for VCU near that line. It will stay in and St. Joe's able to move it away. Gets all the way up to Daniels who tried to make a move but the attack will stop there. Diorio to Santangelo to Sarver. Sarver making a run, looking for Santangelo, but it is kicked out by St. Joe's, and they'll just concede a throw. Looking for Higgins this time. Higgins' header drops into the box, but quickly cleared away by the Hawks' back line. Daniels. Just concedes another throw in. 
VCU wasting no time on these throw-ins. That time maybe a little too quickly as Bagley what didn't appear to quite be ready. Santangelo tried to cross over the Hawks midfield. This throw in will find Bagley though. Bagley, she'll try her luck down the wing. Sends something in toward Matsuhisa. Off the shins of Matsuhisa. Still loose. Mon, no. Higgins blocked. Higgins again. This one just off target. And it will be a goal kick for St. Joe's, but Ella Higgins with the opportunity in the 58th minute to make this an equal game as we see it here again, John. Yeah, tremendous pressure by the Rams. Great job by Higgins to keep that ball alive and make it really dangerous. That was Khalil with the first attempt being blocked by Khalil. She has played an excellent second half so far. And St. Joe's getting uh, Nicole Angelini, Ashley Arandic back into the game. They had started the match. Headed up, and now we see the Hawks with the potential counter. Daniels sends something on Santangelo, checking her bearings, and quickly has to usher that one out of play as she was under intense pressure that time. That was Dumont applying the pressure for St. Joe. She is checked back into the match as yep. well. Dumont came back in there with three subs there. Santangelo can't quite get it out of harm's way. Trouble brewing for the Rams here as the Hawks continue to keep the attack moving forward. Angelini stopped but takes a deflection off another Ram. It's a heavy challenge there. St. Joe still applying pressure. They'll try again. Still more work to do. This one is cleared away. It will be rolling out of play. Boy, that challenge was close, and the St. Joseph's bench really got upset. They're kind of chewing on the fourth official right now. They wanted to see a penalty, and a second goal here would really turn the screws on the home favorite, VCU. And Matsuhisa has been a little bit of a magnet for the ball. She's taken a lot of deflections. There's a nice touch for her, a second one, and she now has Bagley running just to her left. She'll have to slam on the brakes and look for options. She'll drop it off as VCU will start to build from the back now. Mon, what does Mon have? Mon sends something towards Sarver, just too strong on the touch. Cleared away back to Santangelo. Santangelo to Higgins. Beautiful laid pass to Sarver. Sarver slams on the brakes. Shot is blocked. And Sarver, I think if she hadn't tried to check up there and cross back over and just taken the shot that she had, could have been interesting, John. Yeah, maybe just not comfortable letting it fly with the left right there. Crisula has to turn around. Either way, VCU will have to draw up another attack. Bagley. Great touch, drop to Mon. Higgins is going to run to the middle. Mon down the wing, sends something up, looking for Matsuhisa. Matsuhisa will get on the end of it, can't quite catch it flush, and it allows the Hawks to clear it away again. So again, the ball comes all the way out to the midfield. Matsuhisa wastes no time, looking for Mon. Mon has the ball run past her. She'll turn around and look for Santangelo. Now she'll move back toward that line. It's going to be another corner for VCU as Dumont stepped in. But let's take another look here as Sarver had the opportunity. Wanted to go with the right foot, and that allowed Khalil to get in the way. Corner sent in low to Bagley. That one popped up on her, and now Santangelo can't quite catch it flush. Mon. Moves back into an offside or onside position. It will be a throw in as couldn't get the back heel pass down. Boy, Bagley was open on that corner too. Maybe just a little too much pace on that pass. Crisula. Bagley dispossessed by Boyle. Boyle lays it off to Dumont. Dumont. Wow. 
almost a fantastic job by Senek to keep it in. Instead, Dumont wins a throw for her team, and now that throw drops perfectly to Daniels. Charon has to step in from the other side to clear that one away. Just over 27 minutes remaining in this match. Dumont will take the throw. Headed into a dangerous direction. Horton will come off and pick that one up. Will be a goal kick. Horton will lay that one off and Sinek up to Charon, Charon's pass. A little bit choppy and Matsuhisa will have it but only momentarily. Do the Hawks have a second goal in them? Shot deflected by DiOrio. Charon clears it up to Sarver. Sarver couldn't find Mon who she wanted to go to. This shot will go just wide of the goal. What a rip for St. Joe's just missing on the goal. Maddie Anderson, that's not really what she does. Hasn't scored one yet this year, but well, she let that one fly. Sent forward to Higgins, headed down. Now it's Anna Bagley looking for options. She'll find Santangelo. Mon is gonna start a run, but she needs to stay on side. Mon will get it, the flag does stay down. Mon, low cross. Bagley couldn't get enough pace on it. And it will roll out and be deflected by Capaletti for a corner. Well, that's a tremendous opportunity and Bagley just wasn't able on that kind of one-timer to strike it flush. Capaletti did have to get a hand to it to push it wide, but Make that corner number 10 of the match for VCU. Seven and 20 minutes, seven and 19 minutes. Ball coming in. Cleared away, Daniels will usher it further away. Charon wants to push it to Mon. That one will be a goal kick as she couldn't quite wrap her foot around that cross attempt. One thing that jumps out about St. Joe's, I mean, they've had to defend a lot in their 18, and they're just positionally really sound. Yeah, not losing their mark, and VCU has not been able to capitalize yet. They've had a couple opportunities here in this half, Higgins and Sarver, but both times it was Khalil in particular getting in the way. Sarver. Speaking of Sarver and Higgins, those are the two trying to push the attack. Anderson in the way. And Anderson sends it out for a VCU throw. Here comes Krizula. What does Krizula want to do? She wants to go across to Charon. It's taken away. And here come the Hawks. Beautiful attack coming. Angelini loses it. And VCU puts an end to that counter. But Angelini... A great interception. Charon able to get back to defend pretty physically. Mon sees Higgins. It's over her head. And Capaletti comes out to take it away. It really? looked like the perfect ball for Higgins, but it just kept sailing on her. And really well read by Capaletti. That uh, still had catastrophe written all over it. Capaletti finds Santangelo on her clearance attempt. Now Dumont looking for Daniels. It will be kept in. Santangelo, no. Dumont on, but only as far as Diorio. Mon concedes the throw in as she was looking for Sarver. Jess Manella working the fourth official again. Daniels had her hands all over one of the Rams. Another throw in for St. Joe's. The clock winding down to under 23 minutes to go. Still haven't seen any subs here in the second half for VCU. That one is put on to Krizula. Krizula up to Higgins. 
just past her outstretched leg, and now Bagley has it. Bagley with a heavy touch, got to work to keep it in. She will do so, according to the official. That one is laid off to Sarver. Sarver released down the wing, and here she comes. Kendall Sarver, low pass to Higgins and Bagley. Bagley with it. Bagley dancing through defenders. That one, she leans back and couldn't stay on top of the ball, and it will go over the bar for a goal kick. Bagley almost, but you can see there at the end of the replay, she just drops back a little too much. Maybe had a little help from the defender who was right on her hip pocket. And Nevins, who had checked out momentarily, will be back in. She replaces Sam Dumont. Got to figure, if Bulatovic didn't take a knock in the first half, we don't know about it. At some point, you got to see her back on for VCU. You would think so. Matsuhisa loses her footing and takes a tumble. Krasula now has to rebound. That gets around Charon. The Hawks have an attack down the wing building. Charon recovers to get in the way. Daniels goes down but does find a teammate. Keep on finding that maroon jersey have the Hawks until Santangelo gets in the way. Mon wins it now as she take, took it off the foot of Maddie Anderson. Higgins meets Khalil again. Higgins now on the run. What does Higgins have? Khalil back in the way, sends something toward the path of Matsuhisa, but St. Joe's will allow Orindak to get in the way there. Krizula turns around, will give it off to Santangelo. Under 21 minutes to go. Higgins, will she try again from this wing? She will. Khalil, dangerous clearance, almost off of Aisha Mon. Of course, I'm sure she would say right where she wanted it to go. <laughs> and again, the Rams doing a great job pressuring the ball and head of the edge of the attacking third. Santangelo heads it to Bagley. Bagley, perfect pass to Aisha Mon. Now what can Mon do with it? She has Higgins coming toward the middle. That one is up over the head of Matsuhisa, and St. Jones will allow that to roll out for a goal kick. Time after time, VCU on the wing with the cross, but can't find another ram on the end of it. Well, so much of the last 10 to 15 minutes has been played in, in the St. Joe's final third. The finish just hasn't been there. Capaletti. Credited with three saves so far. Probably will be called on again if this match continues the way it has looked here in the final few minutes that we've played so far. Santangelo sees Sarver. Sarver running in on goal. Lays one into the path of Santangelo. It will be blocked. Matsuhisa's shot is blocked. Bagley now. What does Bagley have? Bagley trying to find Higgins. No. It's cleared away by St. Joe's. Aisha Mon spins around, finds the Oreo. Back to Mon. Mon needs to move quickly. She will find Santangelo now. The Rams waving the forwards on. Santangelo breaks, now runs, looking for a low cross perhaps. Sent in and headed on, but wayward of goal. That was Sarver, the freshman, trying to find the goal. Could not do so successfully as we take another look here at the replay, John. Uh, outstanding pressure here from VCU, but in the end, I, again, the final touch, the final opportunity, just can't find the frame. Rachel Brown just came back in for St. Joseph's. And Brown credited with that assist of Nevins in the first half. As you said, John, she's back in. We will see couple subs looking like they're going to warm up here for VCU and maybe come in. It looks like Bulatovic and Munyak. Or no, that's going to be Pustover and Munyak. Yeah, Pustover and Munyak. Boyle left the match for St. Joe's. May have been nicked up a little bit. So as Munyak and Pustover will come in, we'll see Matsuhisa and Charon check out. Sarver. Loses possession, it will roll out to Krizula, who sends it to Santangelo. Santangelo runs into a triangle of maroon, 
heavy challenge into Daniels. No whistles. That one headed back towards Santangelo. She'll recover. Nice little move along the sideline. Stepped in, and Anderson gets in the way as she was looking for Mon. The counter for St. Joe's can build. Oren Dak lays it off, and here comes Daniels. What does Daniels have? She will run past Iorio, run into Senek. Now sends something low that Krizula is able to get on the end of. Nevins. Sending something in, Horton gets a hand to it, I believe, and she does. It will be a St. Joe's corner. That was dangerously close to a second Hawks goal. That was a deck on the end of that, and that was almost game for VCU. Whitney Horton with a strong left hand to deny Orendak her second goal. Nevins on the corner. Sent out and blocked there by Bagley. Bouncing, Higgins heads it on. Sarver and Higgins trying to get in the way. VCU does still have time, but the time's starting to get a little bleaker as this clock runs down to 16 minutes. Aisha Mon forward to Sarver. Sarver takes a heavy collision and will go down. The official said not enough for the foul. He has been pretty consistent in letting them play. We haven't seen a lot of free kicks. That has been advantage for St. Joe's for most of the night as they have been defending most of the night. Santangelo looking for Higgins. Higgins able to get that one down to Sarver. Sarver wants to go to the far wing. It's pussed over, trying to step between two defenders. She will lose possession. Nevins runs into Krizula. Throw in given to the Hawks. Kulatovich is at the touchline and is going to come back on here momentarily. She comes in for Higgins. That would be who replaced her in the first half. Pushed all the way back to the VCU keeper, Whitney Horton. Nevins on the end of it again for the Hawks. That will go off of Nevins. VCU will win a throw in. That was tremendous pressure applied to Krasula, who was having to guard Nevins. And it's Bulatovic uh, in for Mon here. So Mon, who we hadn't seen start this season, starts tonight and has worked very hard, been very effective in the VCU attack, but she will check out now. One is sent up, and Bagley drops it. Here comes VCU. Higgins, under pressure, loses it. We'll sail over Diorio's head. Horton has to scoop it up. Where will Horton go? Thought about drop kicking it instead. Drops it and rolls it over to Diorio. Diorio up to Higgins. Higgins slams on the brakes. Bagley flicks this one to Pustover. Pustover. Where will she go? Looking. Tried to find Sarver. And excuse me, that was Bulatovic that was looking for Sarver, but Bulatovic loses possession. They were looking for Pust over there on the far side, but it will be a Hawks throw. St. Joe's again, the, the back line doing just enough, John. That was an attack that looked like uh, there, there wasn't anything there, and all of a sudden there was something there, and then it wasn't again. VCU, long ball. Blocked, will roll out for a goal kick. 
Hawks now only have to defend for about 12 minutes and 40 seconds. You know, the Rams have had all of the sustained pressure in both halves. They've had long periods of sustained pressure. And then they kind of run out of gas a little bit and leave themselves vulnerable to counters. Capaletti sends this one long. This one dropping towards Sarver, but the Hawks will have possession. Bear has it taken away by Krizula. Krizula gets it to Bulatovic. Bulatovic just loses out as who else but Khalil, Chloe Khalil, having quite the second half here for St. Joe's. That one is sent in. Capaletti scoops it up before that, the Rams can think of anything. That back four for St. Joe's, they've really stood tall. They've been under consistent, almost unrelenting pressure. And they keep making the plays they have to make. Capaletti sends it long. Daniels heads it forward, but VCU under pressure. Can they keep it in? They cannot, so it will be a St. Joe's throw. Under 11.20 left in the match. Easy Green going to come back on here. And Angelini will depart. Rams well, have really tried to work this left side. Kayla Flanders has had a pretty quiet night at that other outside back. Well, she was under pressure for parts of the first half, but you're right, John. Here in the second half especially, it has been this left side that VCU has really tried to push. Bulatovic gives it to Krizula. And now a free kick is given to VCU right about that midfield line. And we'll see what the Rams can do with this opportunity. That was pussed over, falling down there. Diorio giving Sinek the line of sight she wants. Sent onward, Bagley leaps up, drops it to Higgins. Higgins, beautiful pass. Sarver back. Oh, looking for Bagley, and again, it allows the Hawks to come away with the end to the attack and try to launch a counter. At VCU. some point, somebody's got to shoot the ball. Yeah, VCU does end that. Santangelo looking forward for Bulatovic now. Bulatovic. Off of Anderson, it will be a throw in for VCU and Matsuhisa will come in. She will check in for Pustover. Throw in to Bagley, back to Santangelo. Crisula needs to work quickly as Nevin's quickly moving out to mark her. Higgins loses the battle with Anderson. Nevins looking for Daniels, a little too strong. That looked like it might have been a handball. No, says the official. Santangelo with it now. Headed down to Higgins. Higgins looking for options. Free kick given to St. Joe's as Higgins ends up depositing Brown to the floor. Yeah, she got a little handsy right there. There wasn't any question. And conceding the free kick. Nine minutes that St. Joe's has to hold on to this one goal lead to get the upset here in the A-10 quarterfinal. Headed up, up in the air, cleared away by Diorio. St. Joe's again with possession. Forward to Nevins. Nevins gets away. Crosses over Santangelo, will find Daniels. Daniels in the box looking for help. Loses possession and VCU gets away by putting an end to a St. Joe's attack. Their back line called on for the rare occurrence here in the second half. That yeah, was excellent defending from Diorio. He really had to make a play there. Matsuhisa doesn't have a lot of time. Her pass dangerously close to the path of Daniels. VCU does find Bagley, Bagley. Drops it off to Munyak. Munyak was looking for Higgins. Won't find her yet. And St. Joe's again 
clearing it away. This time they're going to try the left side again with Santangelo. Bulatovic won't be at the end of that pass. Santangelo collides with Anderson and then grabs her. No foul. Again, I will say, nothing if not consistent on the amount of contact that does not result in fouls or free kicks tonight. Throw in for St. Joe's. Both benches, I think, alarmed to learn what is not a foul tonight. Yeah, Mr. Coomer, our central referee, Carl Coomer, he's uh, enjoying a nice little jog this evening in Richmond. <laughs> they want to check his whistle for a pee. Crisula moves it back. Diorio along the sideline, has it roll out on her, and it is a St. Joe's throw in. The clock now down to 7-13. VCU did wait till the last minute to find an equalizer against George Mason on senior day. I'm sure head coach Lindsey Martin would like to see one a little bit earlier to see maybe if they leave themselves enough time to find a winner in regulation. As we would have overtime if the Rams uh, managed to equalize. Aisha Mon comes on, replaces Bulatovic. Daniels. Foul Santangelo, and it is a VCU free kick here. Aisha Mon with it. Mon now moving toward the middle. Send something towards the path of a forward in Kendall Sarver, but it is cleared away, and it's a long run for Munyak, who then slams on the brakes and is fouled. Nicely done by Moniak. Sends a long free kick. It will be headed away from Bagley, and St. Joe's maintains possession. The clock now down to under six minutes to go. St. Joe's pushing it further and further away, and now toward the VCU goal. Daniels has Nevins as an option. Nice slide tackle there from Sinek. That one is sent toward goal, but Horton able to scoop it up easily. Got to work quickly, though, if you're VCU. Only five minutes to go. That is a long ball. Bagley now over to Sarver. Sarver got a touch, but it will be, again, Chloe Khalil sending it away, a substitution. We'll see Charon come back in for Munyak. And Munyak's already out of play on that far side, so she'll just take a nice leisurely stroll around the track back to the sideline. Bagley sends something in. Keeper Capaletti comes out to take it before Aisha Mon can put her head to it. Four and a half minutes to go. Capaletti in no great hurry here. You can see here Bagley just that one too close to the keeper and Capaletti coming off her line to snag it. Santangelo though pushing this one to Aisha Mon. It's out of play. It will be a throw in as that was Rachel Brown stepping in the way. This throw in for Ella Higgins. Higgins does a good job to block Khalil's clearance attempt, and now Higgins goes down and wins a free kick. And this is a dangerous spot for VCU. And considering some of the things that were not called free kicks, you are a bit surprised to see this given. Yeah, she just kind of got tangled up there. And there certainly have been um, moments of more vigorous contact that were not whistled. Aisha Mon will take this free kick. She needs to find a VCU teammate here. This one sent up, cleared away. Charon sends it low and into the back of the net. What a finish! It's not going to stand. It's waved off. Matsuhisa was in an offside position. Matsuhisa, who scored the goal, has it taken away. For offsides, the flag went up immediately. We'll take another look here. Charon puts it in. And yeah, you can see Matsuhisa just kind of well past everyone. 
So VCU will need to find another goal. They only have three minutes to do so. Horton comes out to pick this one up. Where will she go with it? She does have a few options. She will elect to punt this one into the path of Santangelo. Santangelo couldn't quite catch that one flush with the header, though. A lot of spin on that one. Daniels won't win the 50-50 ball. Charon to Bagley. Bagley, not a lot of Rams targets there in the midfield. Santangelo over to Mon. Mon. Long ball looking for Sarver. Khalil heads it away. She will recover and concede a throw in. 2.19 to go. Bagley turns. Moving away. Drops this one off to Krizula. Krizula, a long shot that was hopeful at best. Will go wide. It was somewhat close to the frame, but there was plenty of time for Capaletti to be able to react, and it's a goal kick, and with under two minutes to go, VCU cannot waste any more opportunities, John. I think that's a shot that in the 30th minute is a good shot, in the 70th minute is a good shot. Maybe now you do need to be a little more precise. Daniels. And St. Joe's will just kick it as far away as they can from their own goal. A minute and a half remaining for VCU to find an equalizer. They thought they had it just moments ago. Bagley blocks that one. Sarver sees Santangelo making a run. Overlapping, it's Mon. What does Santangelo have? Just over a minute left. Deflected, gets to Mon. Mon tackled in the box hard. Santangelo to Higgins, no. Cleared away. Long shot. No, goal kick, and you got to feel at this point with a minute to go, this is probably it. Here's Mon. Yeah, she was on the receiving end of a pretty tough challenge right there, and then Matsuhisa actually a pretty good strike, just couldn't quite find the frame. VCU asking the official to hurry this up a little bit here, as, again, there is no extra time in college soccer. No stoppage time, this is it. Once that clock hits zero, if VCU has not found the back of the net, it will be 1-0 to St. Joe's. The Capaletti has been patient with her restarts the last 15 minutes or so. Headed up, it's another throw in for St. Joe's. And with each throw in, they're able to tick seconds, precious seconds off the clock. VCU is down to about 10 seconds. They have to win possession and they have to win it now. They won't. St. Joe's will knock off the three seed VCU here in Richmond for a third straight time. The Hawks advance to the women's A-10 semifinals off the foot of Nevins in the 31st minute. Her sixth goal of the season is good enough and 